wonderful sound. And he said, we seem to be, when the Poles are playing Chopin's music, we seem to be afflicted with a kind of national arrhythmia. Well, we're going to have to say what that, what does that mean? Yeah. A national what? What, was what he was saying was, in terms of the, the dance elements, or the folk elements, or the Polish elements in Chopin's music, so take a, a mazurka, for example, which is a, a simple dance in three time. What he's saying is, if you actually calculated the three beats in a bar, in some bars, where, for example, you may delay the third beat more, and then actually elongate it as well, so you're not cutting it short, you come to something like three and one sixteenth beats to the bar. I haven't calculated it precisely. I don't think, I, th I think it would be rather futile to try and do that. But there is this kind of, within, say, four bars of three, so you've got 12 beats, there is this kind of rubbing some beats and paying back, but paying back slightly more. So you end up with slightly arrhythmical shapes. And this is fascinating in Chopin. And I think the greatest players, or the greatest Chopin interpreters rather than players, the greatest interpreters, musicians, for example, Arthur Rubinstein, Corto and people like Polini at his best and various other great great interpreters of Chopin's music feel this and do this and it's hard to explain but it is the it mustn't be overdone otherwise it, it just sounds it can sound quite hideous really if things are stretched beyond a, a subtle amount. It's fascinating with Chopin because he is so closely associated with Poland and yet he lived half his life away in France Let's come back to the pieces that you've chosen. I mentioned the um, the funeral march, and the other pieces are, are a, a mixture of really, really well-known pieces. There's the um, Scherzo Number no. Two in B flat minor. The Impromptu in F put me in mind of a piece of Satie, dreamy, poetic yeah, that's aspect. Well, I think a lot of French music comes out of Chopin. Certainly, I mean, Debussy admired Chopin so much. Chopin said everything through the piano alone. This idea that it's very refined and almost monochrome, I suppose, in terms of dimension monochrome, you know, one-dimensional almost. I always try to find reasons for including certain works, and occasionally, accidentally, during practice, for example, I was practicing the Funeral March Sonata, this last movement, which is very, very brief, and ends with a... this this little little pom pom And it suddenly struck me, wait a minute, that's exactly the same as the B-flat minor scherzo, Dlum, brium, pom, pom. <laughs> and I was, I was staggered at how, you know, one could spend 35 or 40 years. But played at a different speed, obviously. But well, no, no, almost no, not. No, no, no. Because the context is completely different. But this sort of very close little figure, this bom, brium, brium, which seemed to come out of this, du, 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 of the fourth movement of the sonata, and then this upward leap of an octave and a big chord right at the top, this huge, spanning the whole keyboard, was present in both works. And you hadn't, you hadn't noticed that before? No, never. Now, I don't think that's accidental from Chopin. I'm sure it's not. It Maybe subliminal, but it, it's, it's no accident. So there was a connection immediately. The idea that normally, you know, the B flat minor scherzo can be quite an agitated, turbulent work. But following the B-flat minor sonata, which is those qualities and a whole lot more, going into the abyss almost, and not returning, made the skirt seem quite light in comparison. So there's this wonderful juxtaposition of what this piece would have been at the end of a, a recital, so the second skirt at the end of a concert programme, or put after this sonata in the context of something even more stressful. This comparison was, I think, very illuminating. The vicissitudes that are present in the music and the, the contrast and the, the kind of musical discourse, the argument of the material involved, is always fascinating. It struck me that these groups of work, so in the first half, the impromptu in F-sharp and then the funeral march sonata and the second sketch are all written fairly close together. There are common strands between them, as I've mentioned. Obviously, one has to find a, a piece which opens a programme very well in terms of the psychology of the audience settling down, in terms of me as a performer being uh, well-oiled or kind of getting there <laughs> during the first five minutes. All these things have to be considered. 
and I'm not reckless anymore as I was, you know, I don't know, 25 years ago, to sit down and start with something like the, you know, the Bar Chorale or the F Minor Fancy or something like this, but rather just something slightly more easygoing. You're trying to draw the, the audience yeah, in, so gradually and get them to, in, yes. Myself yeah. in, yeah. getting yeah. inside the music. Of course, mm. one hopes to do it immediately, but certain pieces don't reveal themselves immediately. They're not supposed to, and the impromptu is one of those. It just It kind of just, like you say, sati, it's this kind of very gentle just sound movement in the air, very flowing and this quite long melody and it sort of meanders and doesn't really go anywhere until we get this middle section and then this kind of the real impromptu starts this kind of improvisation always like catherine wheels of of sound and scales running up and down the second half to me works perfectly well you have these mazurkas i think no tribute to chopin in in terms of a birthday concert or special celebration like the 200th anniversary would be conceivable really without his perhaps most intimate works these mazurkas which are so deep and personal for Chopin and so it's all the moods and the struggle and the different characters are distilled so effortlessly and so they, they really are quite remarkably personal utterances you have to include some of those in a, for me, the perhaps the most important works of Chopin. And um, not so often played. I mean, the Opus 56 set is not very often played at all. Why is that? Very difficult. Not immediately accessible necessarily. Quite complicated harmonies, very chromatic, things not resolving necessarily the counterpoint in them, all the different kind of melodic strands across the hands. It's quite tough to hold everything together. Are they, are they tough to, uh, from a listening point of view, to, 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 to stick with, to, to concentrate, to I stay with what's going on? I think pieces that if an audience heard them for the first time, you know, if someone in an audience heard them for the first time, they would be quite intrigued and think, oh, there's a different side to Chopin, you know, it's not just the, the familiar things we know, these sort of uh, very recognisable melodies, but something more unusual. They're not long works. They're quite uh, brief, these mazurkas. And then you have, you have a lullaby, the berceurs. Then we've got the berceurs. There were a certain personal reason for including that. But also, again, you've got this kind of... It's like a, for me, almost like a scene shift in an opera. There's just time for, for breathing and repose, and it's the kind of impromptu of the second half, but also very familiar... Many people try this piece because it starts off very simply. The The bass repeats over and over again exactly the same all the way through the piece. It's only five minutes. And then you have these eight-bar melodies which repeat, 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 so like variations. And it becomes just almost like a compendium of, of what's possible in terms of piano writing and uh, using the instrument to, to almost to full potential. And then the B minor sonata, probably I think his longest work, Quite difficult to keep everything together in this piece. It can easily get out of hand and be can very... Get a bit, is there a risk you might get lost in some way? Or? Well, I think the music might get lost. <laughs> it needs help to, to keep together. Mm. It's a very liberal kind of structure. It can be kept together. Again, it takes huge resources of intellectual kind of acuity and just planning, rather like planning a, something very important, some important event. Everything has to be thought about and in the right place at the right time so as to give it the best chance to come to life. So it's a very interesting programme, if difficult, physically difficult, not particularly long. And anybody who's intrigued by the piano has perhaps tried you know, to learn the piano or played some little pieces of Chopin will, I think, appreciate and be interested in this music. Andrew Wild, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, Andrew. It's been a great pleasure.